Hey, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Colt Pack and Izzo podcast, brought to you by Gate City Bank, back in studio for the first time in a few weeks with Jeff Colt Pack. I'm Dom Izzo. As we get set for the first Saturday in November, the Dakota Marker game is back. North Dakota State on the road to take on South Dakota State, a game with monster implications for the remainder of the season for the Missouri Valley Conference Championship, for the FCS playoffs, potentially home field advantage, a seed, Anything else I can throw on top of there, this game has it. Doesn't it feel like there's every year a handful of games about this time of the year that really matter? Really when it comes to the playoffs, you're looking ahead to Frisco, quarters, semis, who's going to get home field advantage? It feels like the same every year. Now, it won't be because JMU is out of here. Yep. Who else... Is, is Sam Houston's probably out of here. Sam Houston and Jacksonville State will out of be here. imminent here shortly, maybe by the end of the week. <laughs> That's just like, and I wrote a column about that today. And I blame Canada. <laughs> We're too close to Canada. Yeah. Everybody thinks you're yeah. up by somewhere where Santa makes toys. But <laughs> it's the truth. We are geographically just screwed. And there's nothing we, we as a community, mm-hmm. I say not NDSU, we as a community can do zero about it. There's nothing we can do. Now, back in the Division Two days, NDSU could have pushed the 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 the, the ledger a little more. You know, they, they could have uh, uh, put the agenda a little bit more on the Division One and made an effort for it because it just was more geographically sound. Mm-hmm. I mean, Missouri Valley football or the gateway back then is not that far away. Um, you know, MidCon was taking members and it had some Midwest footprints. Now we're just talking FBS. That's it. Summit's good for everything else. Let's let's call it like it is. There's no need to move from the summit. That's perfect. Well, I tweeted out a photo of what Conference USA is now. And remember, these these moves for Sam Houston and Jacksonville State are all sports, Jeff. It goes from New Mexico to Lynchburg, Virginia. So good luck on there's no longer your bus and your baseball team. You know, from Huntsville to Lynchburg. And how do you, re- you know? how do you afford that? I just read something today uh, from uh, the Huntsville newspaper. I can't remember what it's called. The Sam Houston students voted down an increase for student fees yep. to help fund athletics, specifically football, I would imagine. They voted it down. Now, yep. where's the money going to come from? <laughs> the newspaper, and, and good for them, and we've known this since we've been there last, since we saw it last fall, that stadium yep. is not FBS nope. whatsoever. I mean, I know it was COVID and you had to space out, but we were outside covering the game. We were. And honestly, the the, the stadium is not. With a track around it, no, that's not a that's not an FDS and even, feel there. Even the NDSU equipment folks setting things up, they yep. had to they had to run lines and communication lines like they had to bring every yep. inch of cord they could find. It's just simple stuff like that. That it is so not FBS. It's it's like the Fargo Dome press box. It's just F, it's just Division Two. So, I don't want to spoil your column here. So, are you saying? And I wrote about I did my commentary on this last week. That uh, is there little to no hope here? Then, if you're a right now, football fan, yeah, right now, unless the Mountain West comes through for a football affiliate, I don't know what else you do. Where can you go? So, the Liberty model, I've had people bring up to me several times. Well, can't they just do what Liberty did? Just say we're going to go without a league. And the answer is no. No. That's not financially viable under any circumstance whatsoever. I mean, Liberty is its own entity and has clearly a ton of issues around it. And that's the thing, Jeff, I want to bring up here as well. Would you want to be associated with that school as a member of that league? And the answer from me is an emphatic no. I don't want anything to do with that school. And now these Sam Houston and Jacksonville State are locked arm in arm. With that school. I wouldn't want anything to do with them right now. No, no, and it's just not a... Nobody knows where Liberty's at, first of all. There, there right. is no geographical relationship from North Dakota State fans to and Liberty. The social impact of what has come out of that school from yeah. Jerry Falwell Jr., everything, is there. you don't want anything to do with it. You don't want to be within 100 miles of that school. I wouldn't. No, not just to be FBS. That, that's Correct. I mean... This you, reeks you of gotta, desperation. Yeah, it does. It just does. Between that and the pettiness out of the Colonial, I mean, college athletics never gets uh, old. I'll say that, Jeff. Between that and then what we saw out of the CAA, out of the story out of the Richmond Times-Dispatch on Wednesday, that the CAA has now put the gauntlet down to James Madison and said, if you're going to leave, well, none of the other schools or teams are going to be eligible for the CAA auto bid. 
I mean, you're out. talk about the pettiness. Immediately. Pettiness to the utmost degree. And by the way, they're not leaving this year. This is still a whole other year as well. It's not till 23 that James Madison will be out of the league. Oh, they have to be appealing to the Sun Belt I to would. let him in now. Well, I, I don't know if they can do that because the rest of the Sun Belt the teams aren't getting in until yeah. 23. So this might be two full years of this for James. Now, if I'm the James Madison players... And now I've already seen a story on this that they are going to appeal this. They're going to take that to court, and I think they'd have a good chance at winning that to to be eligible. And to be clear, it's not really going to affect football all that much because football will still get a high seed. And also, well, it doesn't matter if you really get the auto bid when it comes to a high seed. But the the football bylaws apparently are different than the rest of the league. Because remember, the football there are schools there in football that aren't there in the CAA. So okay. they, they can still win the automatic bid in football. But I'm talking their softball team, which nearly made the championship game of the World Series. Baseball. Their basketballs, which you brought up on Twitter last night. All of them are hosed. Absolutely. Because that's their only path to the NCAA tournament, is to win the automatic bid. It's just pet. It's just unbelievable petty and jealousy out of the rest of the CAA. Yeah, the rest of the president said... <laughs> Get like- the heck out. It's a doggy is. dog world, is it yeah. not? I, I just. <sighs> so, what do you do if you're NDSU? Let's wrap this point up and this segment up with what do you do? What are the possibilities? Well, you need to somehow, and I think a lot of this stems from declining attendance, a stagnation of the fan base of always winning, yep. a stagnation of teams coming in here and not being all that competitive, albeit or. Example, a an Indiana State last week. So you have that, but what do you do? I mean, do you, can is there other ways to create excitement? I think you need to start selling beer. You need to the, a the dome needs to needs to ramp it up here. Yep. As far as renovation, put up the concourse. I know they've been in the plans and in the works, but at some point you got to pull a trigger. New turf will. Help a little bit. That's no, not well, gonna, that's not going to energize fans. No. I don't think. How about how about Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi in the building? For everybody? Wi-Fi in the building would be a good start. There, uh, these destination games, Jeff, are going to have to become the hot ticket for the time being. I, I mean, are people excited about the game at US Bank Stadium? I think there's a little buzz, but it's still a ways off. That's not till 2023. I think there's a lot of buzz about the Arizona game. I think so too. You know, that's there for the and that's next September, but. But I mean, that's those, thinking are, those are one offs. You know but, what I mean? It's not a consistent deal. But that's the thinking now. It's it's not if you can compete for a Missouri Valley title, it's what are you doing for me next yep. year? And that's that's the part. And I don't know how well it serves them, by the way. Patience is a virtue. I get it. But to sit there and see everything, and if you're the the last person and you don't have a seat at the table, that's not going to go over very well either. You know, you you live through the entire division two process and saw it at the end I I don't I'll ask you it seems to me the teams that value football are not in the FCS anymore yeah the difference was a division two kept reducing scholarships and you reduce the level of play and you reduce the level of athlete and over time it's not glaring to your to the naked eye but over time it does have an effect I mean when you go from 42 to 30 scholarships in a what a over a decade period yeah it's going to affect your your product on the field that's not the issue here. The issue is not reducing 63 scholarships. The issue is a competition. Yep. So how many, with these schools leaving, Jacksonville State cares about football. Sam Houston cares about football. We know James Madison does. Who left in the division really values football? We know the Montanas. South Dakota State does. Certainly North Dakota State. Weber. Only recently that they care about it. I still think they're a basketball school. Their most famous alum is Damian Lillard, who plays for the Portland Trailblazers. I mean... You, we did this the other day. You look at the top 15 in the FCS South poll, Dakota right? cares about football. They yeah, renovated but they're, but their they're, dome. But they're not they're not a level of those schools Illinois I just talked State, about. They renovated their stadium. That's a basketball school. But they're putting up a indoor yeah, football. That's a basketball school. Doug Collins Court, that's a basketball school. Most State's a basketball school. SIU's a basketball school. Youngstown? Youngstown hasn't been good in football in 30 <laughs> years. See, I'm starting to you grasp. Know? I know. <laughs> That's the problem, and that's where things are at right now. You know, you look at the top 15 of the FCS poll, Villanova, Jeff, we know they're a basketball school. Southeastern Louisiana, they're, I mean, you know what I mean? That's 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 where I think for Bison football fans, the frustration lies. Are we going to be associated with those schools? Or are we going to, we want to be with other teams that are good. Bring on the competition. We, 
by the way, are building a fifty million dollar yeah, indoor. Right. Fifty, not fifteen, yep. fifty. Five zero. Yep. It's just like you said, geography has always been the linchpin of all of these discussions. And we we, uh, we as a community got by it in division two, division one. Yep. We 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 were able to escape that geographical problem. And also linked arms with SDSU to make the move too. Right. right? I, there was a partner to go with on that front. And I asked Stiglmeyer this week. Yep. I said, "What about uh, these teams leaving?" He said, he, in, "He's got to, he's got to be cautious about it. Yep. He's not going to come out and say, yeah, we need to go FBS.' I get that." He said to me, he was not interested. That to me, he was not yeah. interested in in FBS. So I think that answers but, that question there. NDSU is interested, yes, but it's got to be for the right deal. The Conference USA is not the right fit no. under any circumstances. The Mountain West Conference, I think they would take a hard look at that. The MAC, I don't think so. MAC's not better than the I've been Missouri watching MAC in the last two nights, yeah. and I've been watching it, and I've been paying attention, and I'm just like, fans don't want any part of that either. No. There's, and we know this. There's never anybody there on weeknights. There's just, it's just not. And it's not that great of football. I mean, it's exciting. But the defense is non-existent. They yep. don't tackle. I felt like they had ten guys on defense <laughs> half the night. Yeah, the I mean, guys, are are, guys are running up the middle untouched, untouched. from the seven. Yep, seven yards. Yep, up, untouched. <laughs> I don't want any part of that either. I don't think North Dakota State does. No. How much do you think? And we'll wrap it up here. That being football only hurts this. That it's it's not all sports. How much I think that's a hindrance too. No, I don't know about that because this is a football school and football drives no, everything. But what what are you talking but about? What I'm saying for invites that oh, the yeah. conferences are looking. We want for, we want you for everything, not just one sport. I think that hurts. I don't know. I I, I don't I know the answer hurts. to that. Like the Mountain West would want you for everything. Everything. Then we, we we only have we have a certain amount of affiliate members. We want you for everything, and that they Boy, can't do. Could they somehow afford that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Without, I, I don't think so. Without the Izzo Foundation, <laughs> with a five, with I'm a half just, a billion en- endowment, and plus you are in a, such a sweet spot in the Summit League. Why would you ever want to give that up? You know, for football. How important is football? You just said it. Football is very important. <laughs> okay, it's very important. Would you want to hose it for the rest of your, yeah. for the rest of your staff, for the rest of your sports? I don't know if it's worth I don't selling know if down the hosing river. Hosing is the right word. You're hosing them. If the Mountain West, ask UND about how that went with three time zones in the Big Sky. That's a hockey school. Yeah, but, they're, but I'm talking when they went to the Big Sky. I know, but... The rest of their sports suffered financially. Their volleyball team having to leave on a Tuesday and get back on a Monday in the middle of October. That doesn't work. There is still school to still go to there. So that's the, I don't have the answer. It's just It's not viable there. And I think that hurts. Trying to be a football only affiliate member, I think, hurts there. Shall we actually talk about the football game this weekend? Uh, there is, there a, is game. a game, there a is rather a game. large one. South Dakota State comes in. They have lost two games at home. Their last two games at home to Southern Illinois in overtime. Northern Iowa came in there, Jeff, and really took it to them a couple weeks ago on Hobo Days. What do we make of the Jackrabbits of 2021? Well, we make the trend right now is they don't play that well at home. Hmm. And Stigemeyer was asked it and asked about it this week that he thought. Well, on the road, there's no distractions, mm. and you know you can talk about them. I don't. know, Maybe there's distractions at home this year. We don't know. However, it's a trend, and this is a huge game for South Dakota State if they want to make for run for Frisco. This is a must win for sure mm. if they want to make a run for Frisco. For NDSU, I don't think not so much. One loss, yeah, it, it's 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 one loss. Remember, South Dakota State's going into this. With two, and I still think NDSU would be the higher seed. Yeah, the Bison lost, you remember, in this same position in 2017 and still ended up as a two seed and made it all the way to Frisco. And I still think that would be the case. Yep. I do. The Jackrabbits are a banged up team, but they might be getting healthy. Isaiah Davis was back at practice earlier this week when Matt Ents surmised that he thought he would play. Davis, the standout freshman last year of the spring, who had three touchdowns in the national championship game. He had a touchdown against the Bison in the Dakota Marker game in April. You add him with Pierre Strong, boy, that is a formidable one-two punch. Is Don Gardner, the D-back, coming back? I think he's close. He might be close. Yep. Backhouse is back, the yep. linebacker. Here's what it's going to come down to. Pierre Strong is averaging 7.8 yards <sighs> per carry. <laughs> and South Dakota State, for the last 15 years, has brought in good running backs. Kyle Minette. Zach Zenner. 
and, and, and NDSU, let's just take Zenner for an example, who had a decent pro career, was incredible runner for an FCS runner, and was averaging like probably seven point yards per carry coming into these games. And except for maybe for a couple times and a couple runs over a three, four year period, the Bison shut him down mm. pretty good. And that's what it's going to come down to. Up the, until that playoff game when they did the Wildcat formation with Zenner in that playoff game up here, that's when he really finally gashed the the Bison. But you're right, they they found a way. Now Strong has got loose. He's had three straight 100 yard games against uh, against NDSU. The playoff game in 2018, he had a big touchdown, and obviously he had the 50 yard romp in the spring game uh, in April. So I asked Matt Entz about it. What's made him? He he's gone from a three cut guy to a one cut guy. Is what. Both Entz and Stiglmeyer more, told me more decisive. just boom, and then gone, and then he's downhill, and that's something that Bison defense will have to obviously have their focus on. Uh, the other one is the quarterback. Mark Gronowski is not there. This is Chris Oladokun, transfer that came in from Sanford, who lit the world on fire for the first four games. I've watched the last two games on tape. I watched the SIU game and the Northern Iowa game, and he has been apt to turn the ball over, Jeff. That has been the thing that has really hurt SDSU is his his turnovers over the last three games. Still 16 touchdowns against three interceptions. Yep. That's a pretty good ratio. Yep. But he has not played in this game. He, I, I don't think, and I question this, I was going to look this up. Has he played in his college career ever against a good a, a defense, as you'll see on Saturday? <laughs> I don't know. Sanford, I can't go out of, I, would, yeah. I, I would guess this will be the best defense there. he'll have ever yep. faced. The way the Bison defense has been playing in 2021, there's no doubt. Absolutely. It's, at least in the conversation. On, I mean, on the guy's a, a grad transfer student. He's been around a long time, yep. but this this is a little different level defense. And so, will we'll that have an effect? Gronowski was really good against the Bison D, God, but that really was a good. different Bison D it last was. spring. Yep. And that's why, how much value do you, does, does anybody take out of that game in the spring? I don't know how much you can, frankly. I'm trying to pretend it didn't exist <laughs> the whole spring season, that is. <laughs> I, I just curious on that because uh, that's another factor. And we talked about this on the video blog on Monday. The celebration that happened at the Fargo Dome after the game was quite sustained for the Jackrabbits after they won that football game. Yeah, and thirty whatever years of covering football, and, and we're always there after games for a while, cranking our stories yeah. and and doing post game shows. And I've been doing that again, you know, since the the late eighties. I don't know if I've ever seen that. They were there that, for a that, while. That was odd. Yep. That, that was really odd, and and I don't know if I've ever seen that. Now, will that have an effect once the game starts? Absolutely not. But will it have some sort of motivational zen going on? Uh, probably. Yeah, I would imagine for the Bison, there's that definitely has been But do you up. need any more <laughs> motivational zen? I don't nah, know I don't about know. that either. This, so, the atmosphere is going to be fantastic. We, we were there two years ago when game day was there. It was a perfect day. looks like the weather's going to be great again on Saturday. Regard, it's just going to be off the charts, I think, for the atmosphere on Saturday down there. It's deer hunting. Yeah. Will that affect? I don't. I think there'll be plenty of Bison fans there. Okay. I do. I think there'll be plenty. That Are you saying South Dakota place. State fans don't deer hunt? Is I'm not saying, saying they don't. I'm not a great South Dakota State deer hunting mind, <laughs> but I would think that there will still be some Jackrabbit fans that want to go see this is the game of the year for them. I don't think it'll sell out, there. but I think it'll be pretty good. Really? No sellout? All right. No. Nope. We'll see on that. Bison offense. Obviously, the other big question: Who's going to be the starting quarterback for North Dakota State? Got to be Cam Miller, twenty-one to twenty-nine. He's really, I think, energized this offense to a little more diversity. Even though I talked to Tyler Roll this week, uh-huh. and he predictably said that wasn't <laughs> the case. We, it would have been more diverse and multiple with either Quincy or Cam Miller. But right. I just think Cam gives, and he's he's a different quarterback this fall than he was last spring. Just maybe age, maturity, and and grasp of the offense, but it just seems to run differently. And Quincy's, I mean, he was good. He was great against Northern Iowa, yep. but that, that, that passing game, he, you know, what is he? Uh, the, 53, I don't have a stats. In the front intermediate of. passing game was really good against Indiana state. You saw that with the tight right. ends getting involved with Gindorf and with Babich, just the, the different. And he picked up the blitz Yeah, he did. and he hit yep. the open tight end yep. down the middle. I think you're going to see a lot more, too, of Tameric Williams. We've seen his number get called earlier in games over the last few weeks that I think he's going to be called upon maybe even earlier than we've seen yet, Jeff, starting on Saturday. Well, the tailbacks are put on notice that, you know, start breaking tackles and doing something. And I think Tameric at uh, 200 and 
10 pounds, 215. He's a pretty big guy. Offers the best uh, combination of speed and the ability to break tackles. Yep. Now, Kobe, we saw speed, but I don't think you're going to see holes like that against South Dakota State. Probably not. That you're, that you're going to see against, uh, that you saw against Indiana State. I, I'm i with you. I think Tameric, over time, as as grass of playbook, that yep. was the the bugaboo on him earlier in the year. Pick, he picked up a nice protection on that pass he did. to Babbage to on Babbage. the blitz. Yep. So don't but don't think that didn't go on. No, noticed. absolutely. That's the biggest key, I think, for the NDSU running backs is the ability to pick up blocks rather than making plays and getting loose. That is that's a number one there. And it, I mean, think of the mo- what are the two most explosive plays the running backs have had this year? Canella, that seventy five yarder against Albany, the first play of the second half of that game, and then Kobe. That's it for the explosive, really running back plays out of eight football games this year, which is such a foreign thing to say for Bison running game. Yeah, that's no John Crockett, that's no. for sure. It's not even, heck, a couple years ago with Adam Cofield's touchdown run in this game against South Dakota State. That's that's the part, I think, that got Matt Entz under his skin on that. So you're with Cam. I am. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm leaning Cam. that way, too. I would think that you got to go with a hot hand We here. still don't know if Quincy's shoulder is 100%. We, we don't know that. I tend, by the way, I asked Kyle Emanuel what we were talking about, about having a package for Patterson. What did he say? And he disagreed with you. He said that that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a running play. Okay. Obviously, with his ability to throw the ball, that's the, the change up for defenses, is that it doesn't necessarily mean automatically that they're going to run with Quincy in the game. Okay. Yeah. 75 25, he's going to run. <laughs> Just say it. Yeah, whatever. I look at. You mentioned it off the top here. What is at stake here? So you mentioned with SDSU, a loss for the Jacks, that's three losses, that pretty much locks them into Thanksgiving weekend. A Bison loss, I think there's still a two or a, a three seed with one loss. Because uh, Sam Houston's three, not going to lose. Three at the worst. Yeah, I don't think Sam Assuming Houston... Assuming you win the last two. Sam Houston's not losing a game. No. Then you've got James Madison back in the conversation since Villanova lost. For a, for a top three then, seed. Then, then I think you go to quality of victory, and I think NDSU would have the quality of victory there. with Because the CA is just not good. Yeah, the most state win will help them. UND win. Northern yeah, Iowa. The Northern Iowa win will certainly carry a lot of weight. And watch for them now, Colpac, because I would think Northern Iowa would have a certain uh, argument for them to be seeded. Because they'll have beaten Southern Illinois and they beat South Dakota State. And Sac State. And Sac State, that they should be maybe the seven or the eight seed when we get to a couple weeks' time for Selection Sunday. If they win out. They got to win out, which has always been a tricky thing for the Panthers, but they could be in that conversation too as a seeded team. So who knows? Valley could get three seeded teams. Well, at Illinois State, we're talking about Northern Iowa. They'll win that game. At most state, that's going to be an interesting game. That's in two weeks. That's their biggie. And then they have, I think it's Western to end? Correct. Yeah. So, it's all in front of Northern Iowa. Should we do some predictions here before we wrap this up? A couple up? predictions. A couple? A couple. Well, let's start with that Northern Iowa game against Illinois State. I think you and I goes in there and, and wins pretty big against Illinois State. Yeah, it's the same old song and dance with Illinois State, which had a nice win at South Dakota, no which we'll, we'll give them that, but um, just can't just can't score. <laughs> That's a problem in they football. Did it. They did it in Vermillion, which is still the stunning part to me. The other game of the weekend of the conference is in Carbondale. Missouri State, off its crazy game with UND, pulled that one out at Southern Illinois, who's coming off, obviously, the loss to Northern Iowa. Yeah, that's an interesting game. That's a great game. game. It's, that's, it's a good one. Um, you know, I'm going to go with a with team with the athletes, and I think most state Ooh. at this time of the year, that victory against UND, was it showed me something about most state. Most state of old doesn't come nope. back and win a game like that. Like they're probably not in the game. Well, it showed me. Yeah, well, it showed me they cared. <laughs> yep. And it showed me they had some resolve and and, and those kind of things in football that are wow. big this time of year. Most state, you're going with, huh? All right. I got SIU. I'll take the Salukis. I think they bounce back at home. Most state, if they lose to be five and four, they'd have to win out. You know, that's such a cop out. Oh, they bounce back at home. They How many do. times do you say that? You say that every week I on think, somebody. I think oh, I think they bounce back. back at home. I do. I think SIU is good enough. I think they'll win the Any game. Any team that lost on the road the previous week, oh, they're going to bounce back at home. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'll differ there because I'm going to take Youngstown State to win at UND. UND lost it on the road last week. I don't think they bounce back at home. No, I think UND is going to bounce back at home. <laughs> it's Youngstown. Youngstown's got some guys. We're going to see that no. next week. They got a good running back. That uh, Jaleel McLaughlin's the real deal. Yeah, but he's like 5'8", 
170. Should be right up your alley. This is a guy who's <laughs> not that big. He's got eight touchdowns already this season. Uh, USD at Western here. USD had its up. They somehow the Coyotes have got to find a way to either beat the Jacks or beat the Bison if they want a playoff shot. You know, Westerns won two games, and yep. we didn't think that was going to happen this year. I've been, I had him winning last week. I, I've, I've been very impressed with Jared Elliott and the coaching job. I know it's not coach of the year kind of no. stuff, but it, to me it is in, in a way that he's been able to keep his troops motivated. Yep. And in that case, I'm st- I'm st- I'm going with Western. Ooh, I think they're motivated. Wow. I-, I like the way that uh, they have some. You talk about most states resolve. Yep. Western's got the same thing going in November. They played a good game last week. They beat Illinois State. Uh, I think South Dakota will get this, knowing full well that their season is in the next two weeks. They play the the Jacks and then they play the Bison. That they've got to find a way to win one of those two games if they want. A postseason berth. Lastly, the biggest game of the weekend, if it's not the game in Brookings, it's in Cheney. Montana State at Eastern Washington for the top of the big sky here and likely a top four playoff seed on the line. I'm, I like Montana State. I like the way mm. they're playing. I like the way Vegan has his team playing good defensive ball. Eric Berrier, um, Weber showed that it can hold down a, a quarterback like that. I, I, I like the way Viggs' team is playing. We may be going out to Bozeman for the playoffs, Tom. <laughs> You're taking Montana State. I am. All right. Uh, just to disagree with you, I'll take Eastern Washington. Just, just to, to disagree. Just, just to disagree. I don't. Di- you just feel better disagreeing, but you just I makes do, you feel better. But I like your points that you made there on Montana State. That that to me is really and Montana seems like they are average. Grizz barely beat Southern Utah last yeah, week. What happened? So to that? I don't know what. If, after Bobby Houck said we. We're back. We're not playing Bemidji State. Maybe they can avoid. I heard, I heard Bob Bemidji Stitt. State. They were back in 2014 yeah. on a on an August night. That'll be a fun game. That game with Montana State and Eastern Washington. Reminder: Bison Game Day is live in Brookings at 10 a.m. John Stigelmeyer, South Dakota State head coach, is going to join us on the show on Saturday morning and leading up to kickoff at two o'clock between the Bison and the Jackrabbits. Jeff, myself, think, and a cast of thousands. I think will I've be there. covered Stig longer than any other coach still remaining whether it's basketball or football i think he's number one huh? he, i think he's the longest tenured recipient of my of my bad questions are we going to get a hug on set then no you guys? no i'm just saying he's <laughs> the longest running recipient of my of my stupid story angles and bad questions hey if he calls you by name then you know it's a big deal <laughs> and he does that thanks everybody for listening to the latest edition of the cold pack and Izzo podcast brought to you by gate city bank we'll see everybody at the game on saturday